Hey, this is Matt Starr from Partner in Titan, and I wanted to introduce you to our first ever dev battle. What we're doing with these dev battles is taking the opportunity to pit two of our developers together with some kind of shared challenge, giving them one hour and not telling them what they're doing beforehand and watching them work. They each have a team of developers behind them, sharing things, looking stuff up on Stack Overflow and looking at the chat in Twitch. Um, they'll each be delivered the spec at the exact same time, and at the end they'll be judged based on three criteria. Uh, the first criteria is how much of the spec do they complete, the second criteria is how elegant is their code, and the third criteria is how many people voted on battle.titan.co, not on their performance, just but based on their preference of framework. So people have been voting prior to the actual site being live, prior to us actually doing the stream. So I've edited a few pieces out here just when uh, the, I, we had technical and audio difficulties or when I blabbed on about something that was hard to hear. Um, this is our first ever time doing this, so there's a lot of things we learned, a lot of things about mixing audio, mixing video, so you'll notice that there's some times where it's a little awkward, and next time around we'll do a little bit better. Um, definitely check it out, follow us at, on Twitter at TitanCo, um, and uh, we'll tweet out next time we do one of these, um, and I'll let you get to the, get to the stream. All right, hey everybody, thank you for tuning in. Um, so this is the inaugural uh, Titan dev battle. So what we have going on here is we've got um, two contenders. Um, contenders, you can actually switch into webcams real quick so I can introduce you. I'm going to go alphabetical on all things so I'm not pr uh, prioritizing one framework versus another. Ah. There you go. Starting, Keith Damiani, C senior developer at Titan Co. Wave to the people to Keith. There you go. All right, got that view logo. And Samantha Geitz, senior developer at Titan Co. Got that React okay. logo. You guys can switch back to your screens because this is the first time I'm going to share with you what we're actually doing here. So for those who don't know, we're doing a battle. We're doing a challenge um, that is, uh, we've kind of set up some pre-existing kind of conditions around what the challenges that we're working on here, what it is that we need everybody to, to be doing. Um, and uh, everyone's got, they basically have um, some basic framework stuff set up and they've got their build tools set up and all that. Um, and But they don't know what they're actually building. And I'm going to give them one hour to accomplish uh, preset set of tasks, and then there's some bonuses if they have extra time. And at the end, I'm going to evaluate their code, plus we'll see how many people voted for which at the battle site, um, and that'll be and who, how, how far they got in the bonuses. So this is the first time ever that I'm going to show them that the code that they're actually working with. Um, so let's paste that in there. Um, so you guys can both look in the Hangout, in the um, chat that I put up there, and you can see the spec. Um, so each of these developers is representing one of the frameworks that we use internally at Titan. We use Vue and we use React, so obviously we're not battling to see which one is technically better, but it is fun to be able to challenge to see uh, how each of them shines in these options. So um, we're going to have Vue, which is represented by Keith, and React, which is represented by Samantha, and here's the challenge. You're going to build a Twitter client. So, give, and it's not real Twitter, it's a fake API that I've created that represents Twitter. Um, so given an API with two endpoints, which is show me all my tweets or post a tweet, and there's a few other endpoints we'll talk about in a second, build a Twitter app that does the following. One, present a list of all the tweets listed in one box ordered by date time ascending. Two, present a compose tweet button. And when I press the compose tweet button, it should show a modal or a separate window or a separate panel, whatever, that has a compose tweet window. There should be a text box for writing a tweet with a tweet button that sends out the tweet and a character counter that starts at 140 and goes down to negative whatever. Um, if the character count goes below zero, um, then it should disable and gray out the tweet button. And upon successful tweet creation, it should post the tweet up to the API and also add it to your internal data store. That is the MVP. That's the, you must get this done within the next 57 minutes or whatever else it ends up being. Additional bonus options if you have time. One. Um, just like in Twitter, if there's 11 to 20 remaining characters, turn the character count dark red. If there's 10 or less, turn it bright red. Number two, highlight any characters in the composed tweet box that are past 140 red. Insert picture here, which I obviously didn't. Three, allow for searching the list of tweets by name and content. So it's not searching the API. There's no API endpoint for searching, but it is searching the ones you've already pulled into your app and, you know, kind of like as you're typing. Uh, four, allow for liking a tweet. Um, the documentation that I'm going to give you in a second um, actually has all that there. Um, uh, five, show the user's profile picture in a little thumbnail to the left of the composed tweet text, uh, textbook, <laughs> text box. Uh, the next one is add an emoji picture, a picker to the composed who, who tweet text box. Who QA'd this thing? Nobody. Nobody yeah. QA'd this thing. I wrote this late at night and never looked at it ever again. <laughs> um, eight, allow for uploading images. Uh, show a thumbnail preview and a delete button for the image that you've uploaded and send the image itself as a base64 base encoded image to the API upon submit. Nine, add a pulled refresh feature in the time, tweet timeline. When pulled, updates the internally stored list of tweets with the latest from the API. Um, if you can't do a pulled refresh, the, the halfway step of this one would be a click button to refresh. 
and then 10 add a delete button every tweet. Those bonuses don't have to be in the one to 10 order. You can pick whichever ones you like, complete as many as you can. Uh, the setup stuff, obviously it didn't convert for Markdown very well, but I've already told you the setup, you already have uh, an app up and running. Um, you've already kind of familiarized with that stuff. You've got Axios up and running well. So that's the challenge. Um, you have your repos up and running, and what I'm going to be doing is switching back and forth between the screens um, and kind of hosting things. I've got a setup so I can see myself because this is super disconcerting. Um, but that's it. So do you have any questions for me before you get started? Go on. There we go. There you go. There's an API spec there, and uh, this has also been kind of very haphazard. So if you have any issues with the API, let me know, and I'll, I'll, I'll live uh, stream myself fixing that. Um, actually, can I turn this camera on and have it? I don't know. We'll see. Let's see if it's working. All right. Any other questions? Oh. Nope. No, I think we're good. All right. That's it. Let's do it. All right. So I'm going to see. Get somebody. Okay. So there's nothing in there right now. Okay. Let's get some React Bootstrap going. Trying some things to see if I can full screen it. Can we see the docs? Is there supposed to be video? Yes, there is supposed to be video. Are we supposed to delete? Delete tweets? Uh, that's an option. That's one of the bonuses. Oh, okay. yeah. ah, I see. Yeah, it's the last bonus. I got you. Post likes. Got it. Request. I think going full screen made it uh, crap its pants. Let's undo that. Uh -huh. All right. Sweet. Yep. All right. Cool beans. Clash of the Titans begins. There we go. We're back. Now. All right. So uh, for those who are watching along, and Sam, Keith, I'm, I'm perfectly okay if you, you mute me at times, but I'm going to try and not drone too much. Um, mm -hmm. So here's the documentation, battleapi.titan.co. Um, and so what we've got are endpoints for listing all the tweets. We've got an endpoint for creating a tweet. We've got an endpoint for deleting a tweet, given the ID, and an endpoint for creating a like uh, based on the tweet ID. So, um, oh boy. Um, so get tweets. Here's a sample response, um, and we're going to have a uh, list of all the tweets. So each of the tweets um, has an optional picture, which is going to be um, something that some of, some of them might have, but for right now, these will come back as null on all them. You've got the author, uh, the text, and then our timestamps and IDs. Um, you can create a tweet by posting any of the important uh, things over. You get the response back with the fully formed tweet, and you can also delete by just uh, hitting a delete request over given the tweet ID, and then you can post uh, a, to the likes endpoint, and that will give you all those. So that's the basic things that they're working with. So they actually already have Axios set up, so let's go take a look at, let's take a look at the contestants, mm -hmm. see what they're doing. Um, they each have an Axios basic git and a basic post up and running. So I'm going to start here looking at Samantha. Um, are, there, are there supposed to be tweets in there already, or are we posting to it? Um, you know, that's a good question. I'm not actually sure. Why is this not working? <laughs> Let's see what I can get in here. Let's, Let's make sure I have that. Oh, hide that. Get API tweets. I'm going to do a quick hide. So that I can make sure this is working. Is there a prize for winner of the battle? There is no prize for winner of the battle other than uh, bragging rights. Yeah, bragging rights. There we go. The prize is eternal framework supremacy. Yep, there's that. And yeah, okay, cool. So what I'm doing behind this please stand by icon is I am going and grabbing the right bearer token, which is what we're using to keep you nefarious people from sending nefarious tweets in. Um, and I'm making sure that it's all working correctly from my perspective and seeding a couple base tweets in there real quick. And then I'll switch back in just one second, and I'll be showing things over from, there we go, okay. Put, putting a couple tweets in from our, our buddy Drumpf. Um, all right, so they're now a couple, they're all the same content in there, but you, all, you should all actually get something. All right, here we go, we're back in Keep now. Keep this up somewhere. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'll just go back and forth. Cool. Wish we had it up on a note. Can somebody bring this up on a screen so I don't have to keep going back and forth? Yeah. Set up the documentation on one of the other ones? Yeah, just so I don't have to keep what? flipping back and forth. Yep. Really need to set up some sort of macros. <laughs> you put it on here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so has anybody seen the? I, th I think it's like one of those things. I think it's Alton Brown or one. It's one of those kind of cooking guys where he basically brings in his friends and has them 
bring in their friends to challenge him to see who can beat him. It's one of those cooking people. No, it's, is it Elton Brown? Who is it that does that? Mm. One of those. Anyway, that's, that's kind of like my hope. And, and what I love about those shows is that when the chefs are super, super focused on what they're working on, the host will always walk over to them in the middle of like, you know, within five minutes creating a, you know, some French thing. And then they'll, they'll start asking them questions. Like, what were you thinking by putting the chestnut in there or something like that? So I told uh, Keith and Samantha that I get, to, I get to bother with that right now. So, so we're going to start with, with Samantha. So, Samantha, tell, yeah. me, tell me what you're thinking. Uh, first thought, you're building a tweet list and an add tweet component. What else, what else is next on your stack? So you're going to bring those two in, a, compo- a compose component and a list component, right? Yep. Um, right now I am adding an input so I can actually... Capture that, pass it up. It'll be pretty easy to get the length and at least knock those tasks out. And then I will pass that up to my main component here, which I need to rename from example, and make an Axios call. Because once I have data, then I can pass that right down to here and hopefully start rendering these pretty quickly. Okay. So what is that th- What is that you're copying from? Is that just the React documentation? This is React Bootstrap. Oh, okay. That's nice. So it's Bootstrapified React components. I didn't know if I would need any sort of Bootstrap interaction, but I didn't want to mess with jQuery, so I put sure. this in. Okay. Very cool. Um, all right, Keith, where are you yeah. getting started in? What are you working on? Well, I'm starting with the list. Uh, I have a where, where do I got it? I have an API here, API class that's got it get a post route. So I'm going to pull that in and start with the get list. See if we've got anything, and and then uh, just start building that that index component. All right. Yeah. Um, super. Got our token. This I don't need. Oh. Oh, I have an extra. That's why. Okay. Oh yeah. So so people are asking what what did they have that was set up beforehand. So what I was what I and I actually mentioned this in this original, but it's kind of hard to see. Let me let me bring it up here to show it to you. Um, uh, so I said before the hour, these are the instructions that I passed on prior. Um, I said you can set up a new Laravel app. You have uh, Laravel mix up and running, and you can do make offs. You can have all the bootstrap in there. Um, we're going to get rid of the auth middleware, so you basically okay. want to get a, a normal build that's just displaying either React components or Vue.js components. Um, and then you can set up your own sample component up and displayed in the home route, including React Router and Vue Router. Those are the base, the base things, and making people have to do those basic things that you're going to do at the, basic of every, the beginning of every app was not worth us spending our time on. Um, and then sample Axios clients with a get and post call just to something like HDT bins so that we're not wasting our time Googling syntax. So that's kind of what everybody's starting with here. And, and granted, a lot of the conversations about React versus Vue um, have some conversations about, like, well, how long did they take to set up? And, you know, I've been critical of React often because it takes so many steps to get set up. But when you're v- using Vue at the level that we're using at, where you're using a single file components and everything like that, you've got a lot of setup steps there as well. So what we said was, you know what, within Laravel, especially within Laravel 5.5, you're going to be a place where you can do Laravel new and you can be in React or you can be Vue without any problem. Uh, without any extra steps you have to do up front. So why don't we start at the place that a reasonable kind of modern project within Laravel ecosystem would have, which is already having the stuff up and running for you. No way this is going to be right. But... What's that? In case anybody's wondering, I'm in the basement. And they're both upstairs. They've got accrued people around each of them to, to either respond to requests. Well, I, wanna, I just want to return it in here. Right? Of, uh, how to get anything working or anything like that. Because so. this handles all my error. So oh, I see. I was setting it on the response. I'm just going to return the response data. All right. I'm hearing Keith talking. I like it when people talk out loud. About I'm just mumbling. About. No, it's good. This is good. So what you're working on right now, is, is it you're still in the get or are you creating now? No, I'm still in the get. I'm just kind of getting organized here. Yeah. My brain to turn on. Pulling the data in from the Axos client call, mm-hmm. setting it on the instance so that you can start doing a. Oh, because I'm returning it, right? Which, is that what you said? Because I'm returning it. I didn't say that. Somebody else might have. So this should just return it, right? All right. So I am. Uh, okay. Well, then I'll do it. What's up? He's just passing the value directly in these. Yeah. There we go. Oh, you're right. You're right. I need to promises and all that. Are you talking to me? Or you, oh, it's too many things on bless you. So then. <laughs> Putting while the internet is watching is hard, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> My brain is, is literally shut down right now. I got to focus. Keith, it doesn't help that you woke up at 3 o'clock this morning. No, never mind that. All right. <laughs> so we have input. <laughs> 
And form control feedback. So while they continue hacking away at it, I'll talk to you all again. Um, oop, kick me out. So um, one of the things that I did to get this thing up and running was I tried to do a test run of it using Vue. And it took me about an hour to get the basic MVP up and running. Um, oh, that's just to make all the calls, to get the tweet list, and to get the post hey, Howard's thing up to list them. So I'm actually interested. I might have to, ha have to pull it up for everyone to, to kind of show you what it looks like to see all tweets in one box. how much cleaner theirs is than mine. Let me, let me go pull that up. I'm actually going to check block. Is it like an error block? All right, Keith, so you got a list of tweets there? Okay. I have a list of text, yes. So do we, have a, do we have a spec on how we have to format this? No, none at all. Just make it look like Twitter. Well, can I ask you a question? Step back real quick. Remember the Keith, bootstrap? Is it Keith, I want to see. What was it about the, the, the way the promises were happening with Axios? Because I feel like that's something I run into all the time when I'm doing an Axios Git. Did you have to oh, do it yeah. then? Okay, there you go. Yeah, I just had to do it then and then set it in there. Because ba So basically, the Axios calls are returning a promise that you are yeah. then needing to do. Okay, exactly. so if you're, so if you're this, trying to act on its return, you get nothing, right? Right, right. right. So it's not it's not coming out of here. This is returning the promise. Yep. And I feel right like that here, trips me up every time. It's just getting your brain into promise world always takes takes a minute. Alert danger. Alert dash danger. Yeah. Okay. We need like a box here, so we're gonna really do that in a separate. Uh, oh, you yeah. know what? Component. I, I was come up with a code that I came up with, and I didn't even do that. Let me go do that now. Are you pulling it up there? Okay. Much about the box for the moment. Uh, but we do need to sort it, so. Um, thank you. Yeah. We're back in. All right, here we go. So we're back in now. So I'm going to jump back in to check in with them for a second. But what I ended up doing is I had a tweets and a compose, and this is before I came up with the bonus. So you basically just have a component for tweets and a component for compose, and each of those basically just has the list. It iterates over all your tweets, and then somewhere there's a client. That's basically, you know, getting the data and then setting it on the VM. Um, same What's thing they're doing there. Axios post, and then it sends up an event to update the, the, the top Let's, of the list. So let's, let's see what this looks like and what they're working on right now. All right, Keith, we checked in you a second ago. Samantha, what, what are you working on right yeah. now? So is, is um, your tweet list working? Can we see it? I have input working and this working. Oh, no. It goes negative and does that. So nice. now that that's been captured, I am adding a method to actually post the tweet to the API. Can you show me what that uh, the the red conditional highlighting looks like? Yeah. In in the in the code, because I'm oh, jumping back and forth, so we haven't no, seen no, that oh, while you were. Yeah. Yeah. These low dash. Um, All right. No, tweet. So you're conditionally setting the alert danger class. I got it based on the input line. Nice. Yep. This is more than 140. Look at that. Look at that JSX. So at some point I might try to do it in here, but I'm not going to bet up right now. Do you have a tweet, tweet list working yet or not yet? Um, no, I don't have it pulling down yet. But okay. So Samantha it. started from the compose side. Keith started from the list side. Mm -hmm. Let's see where Keith has gotten now. Keith, what are you up to right now? I'm working on the sort right now, and I was going to do it by JavaScript, but I've got Lodash in here, so I'm just going to use that nice. instead. Love the Lodash. If anybody's not familiar with Lodash, it's a, a better version of underscore JS. Um, which is very similar to Laravel collections if you've heard it before. Tweet, tweet, post is what is the, uh, and this expects author text and image. So sort by what's the direction? The the sort direction? Yeah. Actually we will make the author I chose to use this but I've never actually used Lodash for sorting. <laughs> Even though this is a JavaScript challenge, everyone's fighting about whether there's anything wrong with PHP. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, enlighten me on Lodash. All right, I'll give you a quick history of Lodash while uh, while they keep working on what they're working on. Oh, I see. I'm missing the point. So Lodash is it's clever it's because it's a, a low dash. Or order. Order by. Yeah. There we go. Okay, okay. So this guy, John David Carlson, I think it is? Where is it? John, John David Dal Dalton. Uh, he originally did a lot of work. He was one of those people who kind of did a lot of pull requests right. and underscore and kind of just basically Passes found through. that uh, it wasn't able to get the things through that he wanted. And he split off and create Lodash. But the goal of Lodash was always to get all the stuff in Lodash kind of back in um, to underscore. And so there's this kind of weird, tense relationship between them. But 
it, he's kind of like a JavaScript wunderkind kind of thing. So the stuff that it does, it does it in a cleaner, simpler, more you know functionally appropriate way for people to understand our languages. So the simplest way to say it is, if you're going to pick for one, pick one, always pick Lodash. But if you end up with underscore, it's not the end of the world. So, so this theoretically should do it. So if you end up seeing stuff like this, it's these helpers. And if, if you're a Laird developer, you're, you're already very familiar with these, where it's you know, collections and sorts, floors, maximums. There's a lot of stuff that's a lot of work or very inconsistent APIs if you're doing it in JavaScript. It makes them nice and simple for you. Slice, concat, all this kind of stuff. Do these have different dates? But no, this is one. Let's see if. Okay, I already have that. They have um, different dates by a very small amount. Uh, okay, good. Because I literally clicked the tweet button over and over and over and over again yeah. very quickly. So. Yeah, we look to be in good shape, right? Yeah. So something that might be noticing there is that you're getting a format in this. You know the mm -hmm. the what is that is ISO whatever um, which I think ISO. you can you can just sort that directly right yeah because yeah, it's just text it sorts as text mm -hmm. and if you do a numerical sort Stop on me. that it ends oh. up working out all right so Keith is sorting the list Samantha what you're working on um, I am actually so the 200 is coming back from post request so I'm going to actually add it and I'm just going to make sure I have this immutability helper because you can't mutate states all right, can you tell us more about that. So I've never used back. React before, and I understand don't understand why you're talking about immutability when all you're doing is just posting a thing. What's what? What do you have to work on here? If you imagine state is like a document, you can't just like make changes and hit the save button. You need to basically do a save as, and then create like an entirely like new copy of the object. So, so is this in order to add your tweet to the global tweets object? Correct. Yeah, I'm gonna need this. If I'm doing deletes and stuff too, so I'm just gonna grab it now. So that's one way where the two have started showing themselves a little different. In order to modify this global tweets list, we're having to think about immutability, and, and you know, of course, our first response might be, "Oh, I won't have to deal with that. I, I'm going to wait to res I'm going to wait to I'm reserve my judgment until I see what the actual application of it looks like." But there's a little kind of note you got to pull something in for that. There are more clever ways to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm just not counting on myself to be clever and <laughs> under pressure. Nice. Oh, what am I doing? Thank. all that out. We're just going to move it all over. All right, so Keith has created a computed property, which is basically, uh, if you're familiar with Laravel, it's like an accessor. You're, you're basically saying, I can access this thing as if it were an actual property of my view instance, but it's really kind of returning the response, the result of a particular uh, computation happening. How would Laravel versus Adonis work? Isn't Adonis the Laravel inspired JavaScript <laughs> framework? It's like a WordPress versus Facebook. Okay. Your spies. There's some tiny spies spying on me. I can't see them though, I can just hear them. Coming from that general direction. Are you going to pass all the secret information I have about? I'm not supposed to look at them. <laughs> Am I just going to pass all the information? Are you stealing information from me about how to win? What's up? That's what's going on. Tiny little spies. Uh, yeah. Cannot use V4 on a something. Stateful? What is this? Uh, everyone's running to mutability in state. Can Samantha uh, you make her font a bit bigger? Hard to Working see. Working on it. Cool. Oh, PHP Storm. That's better. Yeah, I think so. Thomas, set it side. Can I use v v4 on a stateful component root element because it renders multiple? Yeah. Oh, is it down a server side? I don't think I realized that. I had always assumed it was front end. I have I have never hit that. No, there you go. It's Node. So it's a Adonis is a Laravel inspired Node framework. That's why uh, some of us think we should do it. So cool. Yeah, uh, as you can tell, I. Right, it only has it. it only has one element. It's it's got a single element. All right, so Keith is debugging an error here. Uh, what was the, the error that you ran into? Oh. So, so I guess I can just go back here. Just do your own V4. Yeah. I don't need to do that. All right, brain. Settle down. <laughs> Settle down. All right, Samantha, what you working on? Um, still working on the post request. I'm doing something stupid. I don't know what yet. 
it's, it it's called as soon as people are watching you. Mm -hmm. I think it's a lot harder to do basic stuff. I can't see you. That's because I don't have a federal function. You're tiny little hidden spies and I can't see you at all. Is that it? Is that it? Expected spec oh, push to be an array. All right, I'm guessing this dollar sign push is part of that immutability thing. Yep. Got it. Cool. So this is being set in state now, properly. All right. So that that means you now are successfully updating the global tweets list to have the list that the single tweet that you just composed. Yep. So now I can go into my tweet list and do something like. So I don't think this is going to need its own state. No, you just pass prompts. What's that? One of the things that I mentioned originally when we started this project was that there was going to have to be an aspect of figuring out how do each of these kind of differ. What are the ways that people think about view and react normally being different? And one of the things tends to be uh, nesting components, message passing, um, and what that looks like. And I think this is uh, one interesting area, seeing what this kind of v4 looks like. You know, it looks one very particular way. You know, it's very HTML style in view uh, JS, whereas as you can see in the JXX, it's Oh, we're starting to iterate over something. Let's do a map, uh, which is a much Wait, more JavaScript kind of way of thinking about it. Is? And this is one of the reasons why it's just different based on how people's brains work. So you can see in that home.view and Keith's side, when he, whenever he's back to it, you'll see a V4, and you're literally, just like an Angular, you're saying for each tweet, there you go, for Push each the tweet in the, the sort of tweets computer property, then oh, yes, kind of show this component, and pass it in. So we got to set a key in here now. If it's new and what two two something. All right. Where can we set our key? Shh. Do we have an ID? ID. Um, I'm, I'm interested in watching this. So I think I remember something about this key where you have to make each right. of them unique. Is that what, yeah. it, what it ends up being? Yeah. It used to, it used to not be required. Right. Passing it, it was only, but it you would end up getting a whole bunch of weird errors when you um, right because it's kind of the same component, and so by putting that key property, you're making right. each of the components oh. noticeably different to the compiler or whatever. All right. So I lost my sorted tweet. Yeah. Tweets. 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 Yeah. That I deleted on. I should have committed. <laughs> Not just this state. Oh, wait, you gotta fix that guy back up. It's beta tweets, maybe? Is that why? All right. All right, let me see. Right now, we'll this later. Let me see if there's anything yeah, interesting to show you all for what I had here. So, my two components here. Oh. <laughs> got the same V4 that uh, Keith was talking about. Interestingly, I didn't have that key issue, but Thank I wasn't you. doing a component. I was just doing some basic text. And I think maybe, yes, yeah, so the, the moment you're doing that kind of for each uh, tweet in tweets, then shows tweet component, that's when you have to worry about the keys. And so I, I didn't have to run into that when I did my kind of quick skip tree. version of it. Um, and what I did was I pulled my compose um, in here, and the compose is, as you can see, it's, it's emitting a publish um, event. Um, and so when you go over to the compose component here, um, when you submit oh. this right here, oh, my data. Yeah. tweets it, posts it over, and then it emits this publish event. And the publish event has the information along with it that you want to send up. Um, and so when that happens, it then sends it over to publish tweet, and it just pushes it into the tweets thing. Um, and of course, when you load it, you're getting this initial list. So this is, you know, one of the things is the way I did it was really fast and simple, but it doesn't handle some of the concerns like, for example, actually right. building so, out a full the UI for the component. So. I'm going to leave this in here for now. Do I have any criteria to judge it? No, that's a fantastic question. Um, oh, there was one question about, okay, is this pseudo app something you would make people looking for a job build as a challenge? All right, so what should we do? Think about it, but here's the thing. Is, um, I try to... Actually, I'm going to mute myself for a second in the Google Hangout so that they don't have to hear me blabbing to y'all. Um, okay, so I one of the things we try to do is avoid the whole kind of the it's, classic whiteboard okay. challenge. Right? You know, we avoid like, having to worry about um, you know I'm going to be put in this crazy you know, pressure situation and, and applying for a job and really have to stress out about it. That said, 
um, independent projects that you can kind of do, you know, on your own are very interesting. A lot of people have concerns about those because oh. you find yourself in a situation where, so um, input you know, here. what if they ask for help? You know, what if they, yeah, you know, copy but somebody but else's code? There's always a So it's kind of some balance Save of like some time not save wanting to force people um, to uh, perform like on the spot, but also kind of see what it looks like, 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 like when you write code. So I think um, what might be interesting about doing this is pair programming it together. That. Instead of forcing somebody to write it, uh, say, here's the thing that we're going to do together, yep. and then just see what the experience of working with the person is like. You can learn a lot about people um, by pair programming with them. So that'd be something more likely. Another question from the chat. Um, John Sugar says, Matt, do you have any criteria to judge this just based on, beyond just the number of features they implement? Yeah, it's a great question. So I think there's three, um, three primary criteria, criteria um, that I think I would be judging based on. Um, the Last first primary point. criteria would be... She's going to start shit posting, isn't she? Um, <laughs> hey, you know it. Uh, the first primary we're criteria have, would is be... Is pagination on here? Oh, pagination? I hope not. I'm going to put the compose tweet at the top. So you shouldn't have to paginate. Like I, don't, I don't know if it's, I don't think it's doing the default pagination in the API, but you definitely don't need to have to think about it right now. <laughs> I'm going to move the button to the top so I don't keep scrolling. Um, all right. So all right. So the criteria. Um, criteria number one, um, I think would probably end up being um, how many of the features do they accomplish? Does it actually do the things? How many click. things does it do? Uh, criteria number two is probably going to be how elegant is the code. If I look at something I, I say, do that doing every a really simple time. thing in, in, in Vue, it's really, really Those, simple to do, and React, it's really crazy. Or, either. man, React did that in a single line of React. Right, so I put a method was, yeah. you know, 15 lines of kind of complex stuff. I would definitely, can, so the elegance of, not necessarily the developers, I mean, these are our two senior developers, are fantastic developers, but more how the frameworks make it easier or difficult to do certain things, that's that's something to judge on. I think the last thing would be how many people Vue, or vote for either Vue or React on the battle.titan at CoSites. <laughs> Let's actually see. I always I leave here. them on. Does right. handle submit on click. Seven and twenty-seven when we were here last. Let's see what it is. Uh oh, React team team React man, y'all got to step up your game on these votes here. That's, oh, that's going I know why. Well, I know so. why. Yep, I got some value. Okay, they sound excited. It sounds like things are going smooth there. So I'm going to turn my mic back on. I know you can hear them this whole time, but I'm going to start checking with them and see where they are. Keith, what you working on? Yep, I'm working on the compose button, and then the compose post components coming after this. All right, making sure my button's firing. Okay. So it says what when the compose upon clicking show modal. Oh God, modals or a separate window or a separate panel. We'll go with that and shows a compose tweet window. All right, cool. So like I said earlier, Keith started on the the, the list side and is moving to compose. Samantha started on the compose side and is moving to list. So I'm gonna call this compose tweet. Samantha, where are you at? What you working on? Um, I have tweets being added successfully. I have um, the input clearing when you add a tweet, but I am working right now on getting the initial list when the component mounts from the API. Okay. I'm not sure it's not looking. I need to look at the API tweets. API tweets. So I, let's just do this. Let's just set the data. Do everything here? Oh, that's like that's good. Nice. It's true. All right, we got some uh, some test tweets in there from Samantha Geitz. None we got from uh, a couple, a couple test tweets a couple. in there. There's a couple. <laughs> <laughs> None from Keith yet, so we're excited to see those oh, start coming in from Keith. You know, like I said, they came from um, different directions. So it looks like you guys switch from one of the index idea. to the list or to the compose, the compose the index right around the same time. So neck and neck right now. With 23 minutes to go. <laughs> Jeez, seriously? <laughs> no pressure. Now, are you <laughs> import, what do I call it, compose, tweet. All right, someone said that they're having trouble hearing, so I'm going to turn them down in the background. So folks in the chat, if you have any more questions, obviously sometimes we can just kind of let them un unadulterated go do a little bit of work for a second. So are there any, right. any other questions, any other ideas you guys have, any other clarification you want on any of these things? You guys are doing Thanks, great. Chat. Love you, chat. <laughs> yeah, send more encouragement. Come on, Team React, Team View. Let them know how they're doing. Do you want to get 20 minutes? I'm feeling good about this, y'all. This is huge. This is huge. Huge. This is huge. huge. <laughs> is oh, here's all the Samantha Guides ones. Are we getting them? How would you structure your Vue.js code? All right. Tweet. 
I can show you a little bit of how I would structure my VJS code, but I'm not going to take long because I'll let Keith do that. But here is, so I, I built a really rudimentary version of it. So basically hit Laravel new. Um, whoa, that's okay, a so crazy a thing that's going on there. All right, so what I did here essentially was I registered uh, two view components, uh, one named tweets, one named compose. Oh, I, you said the audio is tough, right? So let me pull this one down a little bit. Um, one named tweets, one named compose. Um, and they're both registered in, and so in some template somewhere, probably welcome. I probably, I don't even know which one I put it in, maybe home. Yeah, I just put a tweets component. And so because this, um, this global kind of view instance that you get out of the box from Laravel um, binds to a top level um, ID named app, you can see that in bootstrap.js how this is all set up. You got Axios for free, you get jQuery, you get Lodash, all this for free. Um, in the end, that instance ended up being bound to, actually, no, it's right here. So all I had to do was just go anywhere in the page because the default um, template has an ID of app at the top level um, and then do tweets and then the compose is within the tweets. So you could do them as two separate ones, but I had a tweets, which is a list of all the tweets here. Um, you can see there's your single uh, components, uh, like sim uh, single file components. And then I embedded the compose one within that. And so uh, you, when it mounts, you get a list of all the tweets. You set it on the instance, no. um, and then the compose one um, allows you to compose, and when you compose, it posts, and then it emits an event that the parent listens to, and when that event is listened to, it sends a publish tweet method. I do that there. And then it updates it by pushing it onto that uh, top level tweets. That's what it is. Oh, it's then. just that? All right, let's do What plus tweet. one for React, React on Post tweet that view. Uh, the source code's not up yet. Uh, mm -hmm. All right, so let's so, go back and check it out. So the internet now. knows why I'm struggling with this. Usually I seed stuff server side for an initial mount, awesome. not client side. So I think what I'm actually going to do. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Matt, are we allowed to use the guzzle? Um, no. The initial data? No. Nope. No, what, what, okay. what is, what, so what's the concern with the initial data? You want to serve it on the page itself? Yeah, to pass the initial tweet no. loader. All right. Nope. That's fine. Y'all have to get it. Get it in. Uh, get it in JavaScript. That's cool. I don't think you're supposed to do it in the constructor. So the the question here for anybody who wasn't following what Samantha was saying is that um the, the something no, but it's, on a normal basis is uh pull a list of things import um no, from it's like API, all our other components it, it, right like our tweet where, component. Let's, uh, I'm sure it was in no. the, the mounted um in. And keeps Post. and so what she's trying to figure out is on map. Um, what does it look like to pull that in? So we have any rack people who have a, a, a code base where they do that like commonly. Doing this Feel free to send a link over. No, I am doing like the same shit we're doing here. Uh, Twenty minutes, I believe. Yeah, this is going back. This is the response. Yeah, I don't. I want to know why it's left. doing it though. Nineteen minutes to go. Point to mount. All right, let's check in with Keith. I'm doing something real stupid, you guys. Keith, you are. I have no idea. I'm getting an error. Tell me what stupid thing you're doing. So I'm getting an error when I click this button that the. Apply is not a function. What on earth is I that? On the, I think this is working. But let's double check it here. Functions dot apply is not a. No, I'm just I'm troubleshooting just by clearing everything out. Right. Okay, so I'm using component. It's the compose so tweet button, right? Is that supposed uh, to be popping yeah. a modal or something, Keith? Yeah. Well, right now it's just supposed to display the component, but. Uh, Where's that button defined? It's up here. What is if you try? Native? What? Uh, well. Yeah, maybe. Oh. But I, I, one thing's it's saying the functions yeah, click native. Oh, there you go. Okay, cool. Oh, 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 no, because oh. this is the initial. Right. Simmer down, Keep guys. Simmer, simmer down. down. So now let's see what Samantha's got. What's, what's, <laughs> what's, what's our moment of joy here? What did we just learn? I'm trying to update the state tweets before, like, we don't have, this is the components okay. mounting. We don't have yeah. tweets now. I don't need to do this. I'm just setting it like so, the initial data. Off, turn that back on. Look at that hot module No, you, you Can I watch this video later? Yeah, I'll upload the whole thing over to YouTube right. later. Right. Um, it's. I'll try to post it over from Twitch. I'm also trying to. Um, I'm using OBS to directly save it down to my computer to see if that will be a higher res version for us to upload. Does the tweet list have to stream? No, not within an hour. <laughs> oh, we have another view hey. fanboy. We got a dark boy wonder Sean. Uh, I've got someone else in the, the view right, side. I've got nothing here, so why? Twitch only stores for recording. Yeah, Twitch will store it for 30 days, but I will push server. it over to YouTube uh, before that time. Show post. Right, let's see what they're doing. What's up? Can I just see the constructor? I don't think you're supposed to use access calls in the constructor. No, no, no. The yeah, well, same thing for Sam. We have the we'll state tweets. Yeah. Go ahead and dip out. Like, we should have. Any React developers? 
Sorry, I'll mute that. Any React developers are familiar with live what stream it looks code like is hard, stuff. y'all. Yeah. Why are you saying? I've been saying that since I've been doing Twitch. That there's never more pressure than a live streaming at a, a talk or when a whole bunch of strangers oh, on the internet are watching the code. This. Trying to help Keith, but not type fast enough to help you. Yeah. Let me go back and check. Laravel UK, I, you know, oh no, oh no, I did the same thing last time. Nope. Six. Sorry. So it looks like Samantha discovered that her problem was not because she did anything wrong, but purely the difference between fat over arrow functions. Yeah. Look at the second tweet, y'all. What? 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 Link to the channel. Well, we did it. It's calling this fine. It's just not set in compose tweet. Mm -hmm. Let me post that link. If Troy can't oh, spell yeah. them, all right. Oh. Damn, let's pick this pace up. Now. All right, all right. Keith, picking up the pace. What you working on? Oh, you can't hear me. Keith, picking Sorry. up the pace. What you working on? Well, I I spent like nine, grab moment, nineteen minutes debugging this stupid button that was, was not firing, and then it was well. Uh, <laughs> we had the name of this is just a. Derp. We had this data property called compose, and we had this method called compose. So uh, it's setting this compose. Oh, got it. So, you've so this was calling compose. compose. Right. I didn't know which one. It... So the dot native didn't matter. No, the dot native. The... Worst. What? Worst. What'd you say? They were down. <laughs> that was uh, so. So for right, those who so are I'm gonna call, listening in, uh, Team uh, React, you know I've got a Team View are in. on two sides of a big room upstairs, and they're split by a big, uh, a big divider down the middle. The so they're yelling go. across the, the party lines. Next. All right. So now that you did that, Keith, you're now going to work on actually getting the compose tweet modal working, right? Yep. All right. Check I'm cheating. A second. Oh, pulling out a component I already have. And, I mean, same was. Pulling out a bootstrap, so we do what we do. Down on the wire, man. Fourteen oh. minutes here. Samantha, what you working on? Um, vapor netting. Okay. And just presentation, right? Oh. So, uh, yeah, we got all our tweets pulling, so I'm gonna pull in author info, date. We'll check, yep. make sure you're not to <laughs> not sort by date. Pull that in. Moment yeah. JS, everybody's favorite if you've ever done front end JavaScript and dates Mark. before. Oh. Let's watch Keith start building his compose component. Okay. Got a name. All right, Matt, so how many people do we have in the Twitch stream right now? No yeah. idea. Let me check. The model. I feel like we should do a ghost. How do you guys feel about a ghost? So we're going to need to submit oh, this. I'm going to bring in a, another helper I've got. Should do a what? Oh, you calendar, not calendar. Nope, nope. Don't actually play it. Nope, nope. Get off me. Okay, let's just go. Uh, calendar. I'm checking the viewer list. This is exciting. All are you out there? Oh, all this in. I don't want to count. Don't make me count. I have a field okay. helper here. Yeah. Oh, the iframe's even running off the bottom of the screen. Yeah, oh, yeah Team React. <laughs> Let's do that, and then let's do. So Samantha, counting a list of people is too hard, but it's somewhere above Eight twenty. I don't, I don't know beyond that. All right. Okay. Let me see if I can pop this chat, chat out. Offer. Pop this chat out. How does how does Twitter have it? All like Twitter notifications. Guys, coming out straight of a job I'm doing. There we go. Let me see this list. Oh, nice. What is called in the API? Let's come off the bottom. Come on, Twitch. I do better. Do better. All right, what are they working on? Author. All right, so Samantha's formatting all the individual tweet components in her list. Thank you. She just got the author, got the, uh, the text of it, got the date in there. We've got 12 minutes left. We're cutting it close even on the MVP, so I don't know if we're going to get to any bonuses. Just, I mean, making just, back, they, just call someone. they find a the... bonus that they can pick after they got the MVP done? I'm not going to use this. I'm just going to... All right, she's formatting. What's Kate doing? Yeah, 11 minutes. Yeah, there are my Twitter notifications. Oh, man, they're serious. <laughs> 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 Hi, Bryce. Yeah. I see you blowing up my Twitter feed. All right. That, um, we're only sending one thing for it, right? Okay. All right, so he's still working the composer. Right, get rid of all that. Okay. okay. Let's run through and make sure we got all the... Okay. 
If you had two endpoints, list of all tweets in one box, ordered by date time descending. So we probably want to do. Keith writes a lot more of you than descending I do. Descending. He's importing all these components, and I'm like, newest? I don't need that stuff. I don't know. We would want the newest. Yeah, mm -hmm. it better mean that. My right, it's in that. Because it, I don't know how to handle it. If it doesn't, right it's now. reported. Oh, we didn't text. It's not found. Okay. There we go. JavaScript have a reverse method. There we go. 6,500 right viewers, 785 total. Thank you. Probably. On JS array reverse. Andrea, I'm quick. Reverse stuff now. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to figure yep, out time between clients. One moment help with that. Probably. Okay. Not. Present a Adam close Adam says y'all are button. doomed. <laughs> Let's make that. We're doing wait, tests. no, a composed tweet button would be something that reveals the form, wouldn't it? Oh, wait, wait. Present a list of all tweets in the box. Present a composed tweet button. Does that ever happen to you? I don't think you show a modal. React superior uh, or variety. Oh. Wow. Oh, yeah, that's fine. You know what we're going to do? Um, React and components, right? Everybody, this is what we're going to do. I mean, I'm sure you guys over there can do that. We're going to do this. <laughs> uh, render. Kind of read the text one to find. Bootstrap modals. <laughs> right, that looks like. Okay, so let's do here. Let's just, Second, Our main app .js. We, we need a. Just waiting to see which of them sees it. Show up first. Come on, hit that refresh for ten minutes left. So okay. What do I want to do here? Okay, so we want to make this a modal. And we want to add a button. Not even noticing it. This is going to be the ugliest for a client ever. Compose tweet. And we By the way, Adam Wadden is in there. He helped with the original idea for this, and some of the bonus ideas as well. So thanks for the thanks for the idea, Adam. Beep. <laughs> I think Keith might have just seen my tweet. What you call this? Let's call this uh, submit. All right. So we need to add a BS style at the bottom. BS style button. Wait, where? Post. Ah, uh, style. Thank you. Adam, you introduce more than 17 chaos points. I'm going to call it 42 chaos points. I don't want to do. This is... All right, Keith, so you're working on getting the tweet I'm working button on the actually post. work, right? Yes, I'm, getting, I'm working on the post now. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. So that should... Actually, we probably don't need a second method for this. We can probably just do it in here. I don't want to bother him because it's so close to the wire, but it's looking like Keith probably has a um, template that he uses for these components because you notice it has post, the same kind of error handling and all of them. Oh, tweet. All right. Cool. And sometimes that sometimes really helps you. I mean, when, posting, I, when, I, when I don't have a template, you know, I hit an error and it totally burns me. But sometimes those templates tweet. can, okay. you know, so I remember when HTML5 are... boilerplate was really big, having a template with a whole bunch of stuff you're not going to use can actually burn you a little bit. And so I think one Let's thing we're noticing it, there is that sometimes load. Axios or the other things can actually get more yeah. complex than you need and kind of get you lost in the, in the weeds. Um, all right, what do we got here? Oh, we need more than that. So we, Matt, this has been fun. Will there be more battles in the future? There will indeed. That's why I wrote Battle mm. One. Uh, and next time, we'll know we're doing more. This is when, this is our first time ever trying this out. We just came up with the idea. So hopefully next time it'll be a little more. We'll, we'll have things prepare a little bit better. And, and do that. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, Marge already said that. Thanks, Marge. Do, but we'll roll it later. Well, like, how do chaos points convert to disrupt false. points? God, that's a fantastic question. I'm, I, you know, I've got to say I, I got nothing on that one. Involves some complex geometry, though. So, add tweet is actually. Let's pull this back in now. And then I have. All right, check out him again. Images later, right? JS cheerleader just asked, "Is it a dance battle?" I, it should be. I don't know why we didn't think of that originally. It should be consistent here. All right, Samantha, what you working on? I'm making the composed tweet modal. Okay. I was not paying attention to the directions the first time. <laughs> I just it, modal component or any or a page, so it does not have to be a modal. It can be something else. So, this, what's that? Uh, Sorry, that was I'm already happy. This pose, so uh, cool. tweets payload. All right, so she's got a compose inline compose button, and she's switching it to be a modal. Keith, what you working on? I'm working on the post. I just formatted the payload. See if it's posting. Let's see what's going through. This is good. Four twenty two.
if you're watching this on YouTube Author. afterwards, there's a Twitch chat that I'm, I've Text. got another screen over here, and that's what I'm referring to. Anyway. I thought it was just going to be a little too much to put it on screen. So again, I uh, would love your feedback text. later about how this whole format works I'm out for you and everything. So one thing to talk about would be... At least text is required. Uh, especially if you're watching it later. What does it look like? Text cannot be not blank. That was not in the spec. Or was it? <laughs> it might have been. <laughs> I have no can idea I, if it was in the spec, but I'll take full responsibility blank? for that. Yeah, all right. So I'm very tempted let's to change the API at the last second. Get around that, but I won't. By just setting a default. Oh, so we need blank. So Keith just ran into a thing where Keith's he's sending something over and it was erroring, and he wasn't sure why. It's because spec. apparently the way I implemented the API it required that there was actually something filled out for the tweet text, which I did not mention in the spec. Ooh, look at that! Blank tweets are not in the spec style format. Right. There we go. Look, we got a default there. Because <laughs> defaults know any tweets. We're gonna we're gonna send that through secretly. What's that? So, How's the modal going? I see. Okay, you're copying the modal template over. Yep. Trying All to right. get your own code in there. All right. So you're just putting the add tweet uh, component directly in the modal. Yep. All right. Yeah. Character okay. numbers. Yep. You can do that. Yeah. Five minutes left. So, so let's put it. Uh, so an app we are passing down. I say a box. It just says next to the button. Next to the button. As you can see, what Samantha's doing in the button, she has her compose tweet button here. Uh, below that, that's a list of the left of the button. Left of the button. At the bottom of that, there's a compose tweet uh, modal that she's going to have that's going to pop up the most uh, whenever she hits that compose tweet button. And then she's putting the add tweet actual kind of uh, user interface element within the body of that modal. Good job. Good property. Character count. Uh, Keith's starting to do the okay. stuff right now, which we saw Samantha do at the That's very right. beginning, uh, which is kind of calculate um, um, what the character count is. Um, if I remember correctly, button, the way Samantha button. did it originally was that she um, did it all online. Button here? Um, and uh, it oh, seems like a little more idiomatic for you, and it's definitely the way Keith is doing it to do everything as properties. Yeah, I'm just making sure we can get a count. Four minutes to go. I had a question. Uh, how are you handling a single API between these two teams? Is there any cores issues? There would have been. Okay, we talked right. about the possibility of white what is it? Um, But cores is a beast. Um, and the, uh, despite evidence is the contrary, I, I kind of created the API in a pretty short period of time also. Um, and so because of that, um, <laughs> Because of that, I just disabled cores, and instead uh, I added the API, uh, bearer token oh, API, so to make sure that nobody was kind of hacking at us at the last second there. So, and Adam says, there's no way anyone does the bonus of highlighting the actual text under four. Yeah, that's, I, I, I never thought that one was going to happen, but. Um, yep, exactly. The content editable, and who knows what else. I'm, I actually, I feel like we should go hack into some web-based Twitter client and figure out how they do that. That's what's so so red. I completely broke this with three minutes left. This is not good, y'all. I was worried that uh, Sam was going to break, but she's decided to go modal, that she's going to break everything, and this is definitely having oh, some the bonus. naming and necessity. Yeah, I need all I can get. All right, switch so character and count, she's going. disable the button. <laughs> Had a good call. All right, yeah. button, set state to modal true, tweet list, compose tweet. Uh, so. Sam's doing some frantic debugging here. I won't the bother. Class, right? Two minutes left. Disabled. I'm not going to bother them. Let's compose tweet. Sensation modal true, show the state show modal, unhide. Is this that state show modal false? Okay, compose tweet. Modal show this prop show modal. Is that what we're passing through? Um, the wire. Do you want to do something like? Okay. It has more than 140 characters because negative character count goes from zero. Disable tweet and add the tweet to the internal data store. Okay, so that's what we need to do. So, she's debugging. Switch over to Keith. See what he's doing. He's looking down the list of things to make sure he's got all of them there. All right. Follow the click. Just follow the click through the path. That's how you're gonna find it. This post, right? It returns a promise. Yeah. Uh, we gotta see it's, if this this modal is gonna be the death of the team react. Update react. state during state transition. All right. You know what? For Balin, for Balin on the modal. No models. Bailing on the models. It has to be a right? And not, One I of the things I've been mentioning this whole time is that the yeah, component just... nesting and that message passing and state passing between components, especially parent and children, is always the most difficult thing <laughs> in any <laughs> uh, framework. It's really what they're 
they're always trying to solve yeah, it like, there. So. Have a working app that doesn't meet all the requirements. <laughs> then it has to be completely freaking busted. This is what we call agile, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So let's see what Sam's doing as she does. Yes. <laughs> Please, there we go. All right. So we need to add that. All right. So she's on the, the top. Mode. I guess it's going to resort, so it doesn't matter. So we say this. All right. She got a list of tweets. She got uh, the bottom. She's just trying to make sure that that's going to pass that up. We're going to it in at 830. All right. So we're going to say this. Who's tweeting at that moment? Uh, emit. And then I'll see that later. Add Host. It. All right. I'm actually going to give them until 831. That's I'm giving you until oh. 831, which is uh, an entirety of about 50 seconds. This on added. Compound visual zero, disable. Right. Tweet list, sorry. Right. Tweets. The state image. Uh, yeah, shut down. Uh, the way anyone does the phone is just highlighting the. I'm, I'm actually I'm going to explain one more thing to the chatters, and once I'm done explaining this long-winded thing, that's it. So it's, you, you maybe get to one eight thirty one in a second. All right, I forgot. So somebody asked something about why do we not have a kind of a global data store, um, and then somebody mentioned talking about Vuex, and someone else talked about Redux, and so really the different thing is going to be like. How do each of these individual oh, things handle um, where the tweet, the, the, the state you know, lives, does the state live on a com individual like, component, on a parent component, or is there some point. kind of separate thing that each each have access, access have to? And, and, and Vuex and Redux really better basically better tend up to be that. There's some place that all the data is stored that is kind of so, parallel right. or external or whatever else. Um, and, and <laughs> Nobody will know, right? Basically, definitions of how to do those, mm -hmm. and so uh, they didn't choose to do that. I think Other because those things are URL. powerful but extremely complicated. Uh, so, no, it should be because it's an array, right? All right so, oh no, it's not an array. It's not labbing. There's no images. No, because it could be an array, but it won't notice a change in the array. Ten, nine. Eight, <laughs> seven, six. You ready for you put your knives up? Five, uh, four. This tweets push three, spots. two, one. All right, everybody, mm. knives up. All right. It is a done Big deal. Fail. Way to go! Come on, clap it up for Team React and Team yeah. You. Thanks. Oh my God! All right, way to go! Not really. Okay, so now, now is the judgment is, time. No, I'm gonna keep working. You talk, I'm gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> uh -uh. All right. Uh, since we're going alphabetical for everything, Keith, that means you're first. So, can you first show us your app? Show us it working. Oh, it's amazing! And then walk us through your code. All right. Keith wins my ass. All right. Here's my app. Um, I didn't do any of the formatting. I was just building the structure. So. Didn't get to any of the formatting. Um, but yeah, we got our compose here. I wasn't going to mess around with modal because I don't like modals in general. I'd rather it pop up in line and it saves time. So uh, we got compose tweet, enter our text, oops, enter our text, we got our counter next to it. Uh, it goes down into the negatives, disables our tweet. But if we're positive, it's going to just respond immediately. And there we go. So the last thing that I hit a snag with is after we get our response, which we're getting fine. So we we uh, compose a tweet, we send it up, and then we send we have to send a message back up because we can't uh, modify the tweets list because properties are immutable. So we send this message up that it was added with the response, and then we catch that message here, push it onto the res uh, push it onto the tweets array, and that should react. Uh, no pun intended, uh, to the additional <laughs> tweet, but it's not. So I'm going to troubleshoot that while, uh, while you talk to my opponent. But uh, this is the ugliest app I've ever written. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it, it will win no awards, but, um, but I've learned that my brain is not good at working with... Pressure situations? With a high pressure situation, yeah, yeah. And I have a whole new respect for those that are able to do a coding demonstration on stage mm -hmm. in front of a audience. So yeah. that I learned. Um, so your components that you have, you've got your home component. Um, yeah, so i got a home component that right now is just is basically holding everything. Uh, so we've got this template here. Um, and I get, you know, just what I found is that with my, by trying to think about going fast, 
I missed just completely obvious things like, you know, we, I know we need this one top level element, but I used a repeated element here, which you can't do. So that, that was a rookie mistake, but little things like that just really threw me for a loop, which under normal circumstances they don't. So, um, Anyway, so yeah, we've got this top top level component. We got the tweet list here. We got the compose tweet button that just shows up when uh, this flag is set to true, uh, and then this is this is the list here. So the list just iterates over the tweet. Uh, this sorted tweets is a computed property, and that's going to respond to uh, any changes in this variable here. So whenever this tweets change, this will automatically resort itself. Uh, we're using Lodash here to sort it descending by created at. Uh, and that's it. We we fetch them all as soon as we load this component. So in the lifecycle, as soon as this component is created, it makes the Axios call, which is calling this right here, uh, which we just pulled in as like a little mix-in. And uh, it fetches a list of tweets immediately. Then in the compose tweet, I uh, got this component, the input text component, which is just basically a reusable component for styling a, a standard input field, but allows you to just pass in props instead of having to set everything manually. Uh, we've used vModel, which is uh, vModel for the text. So the input text component is going to update this the same exact way with this emit. So it emits an input um, event. This then kind of magically uh, updates vModel. vModel is just basically a shorthand for listening to the input event and changing the value based on what comes back. So that's the input text. We've got a character character count here, which is a computer property as well. And again, that's just listening to this.text.length uh, in response to that as that changes. So we don't have to do anything to hook that up. We've got a button here uh, with a click handler that calls the submit method. Sets our payload the way that the API expects it, sends it through to that API mixin. Uh, and then once it gets response back, it sends a message up the chain to the home uh, component with the response. And so that's where we're at now. And now that response should be pushed directly onto the array. Uh, I thought that the issue was I had defined tweets as an object rather than an array. And view does not uh, respond to interior changes in an object, but it does respond to list changes in an array, if I have that correctly. Uh, so I thought that was the issue, but that doesn't seem to be the issue. So I will continue to, to uh, debug that, and uh, that's where I'm at. All right. That looks good. Um, have we seen all of your components? We saw your tweet. Can you can I see your compose tweet component again, just to see the, the yeah. emitting? Yeah, so that's... All right, so when you hit that, you're posting it, and then you're emitting added, and then so when you, is the tweet um, is this compose tweet uh, component embedded in home? Yes, everything is embedded. Uh, no, I'm yeah, yeah, it's embedded in home, right? Yeah, and we're that, oh, sorry. right, we're conditionally showing it based on the state of this button. Yeah. So what I would what I would end up doing ultimately once I got this stable would be to merge these two, mm -hmm. um, and have have the compose uh, tweet button basically in the compose tweet component. Uh, because it doesn't, they don't need to be separate, and that way we can move that whole that whole compose tweet component anywhere we want. But um, but I hadn't gotten anywhere near the point of actually making this logically organized or pretty. So I was just trying to get it get it functional, and that. Uh, but but yeah, I would I would put the button inside here, um, so that basically we'd have mm -hmm. at the top level we just have a, a compose component, and we'd have a tweet component. Cool. Anything else you want to show? You feel good. Oh, I feel so good. <laughs> I feel so good. I like it. All right. Way to go, Team View. Nice work. All right, Team uh, React, show us what you got. First, show right. the app, and then show us your code. So ah, here's the app. It does not have a modal or separate page. I tried to make that happen, and I had about two minutes left and was like, it's not going to happen. Control-Z, Control-Z. Um, you can go in and. Great. And I realized that my dot reverse is reversing everything, and we don't want to do that. Um, but it does load all the tweets initially when you pull it in and it has them working properly. Um, and then if you are remaining, if it's empty input, this is disabled. If you have 
How many characters? It yells at you and disables this. Um, yep, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the gist of it. Um, so code, I have a top level app component. I didn't do all the pretty Axios and Window API.js uh, stuff that uh, Keith did. All right, I, I <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just mumbling to myself. I'll move my mic. <laughs> Um, so when this like bottom level parent app component, um, initializes, we're setting, well, I guess we don't need the show modal anymore because I don't have a modal, but an empty tweets array. And then once, um, the component did mount lifecycle method fires, meaning React was like, okay, this component's up. We make a call to the API. We get the tweets. We set them on state, which is when they're actually rendered. Um, so here we have the add tweet component. So we're pulling in a couple of different components from Bootstrap. Um, we've got two different handler methods here. Um, one actually handles the input change. So every single time you like type something, um, it fires on change. It handles handle input change, passes it up to state, which is nice because then you can do all these like you know, checking things in line, like, oh, hey, you know, your input makes fair 140, let's set this alert danger class, so this is red, or let's disable this button. Um, and then the second method is this handle submit, which is being passed down from app as an add tweet method. So this is what makes the actual post call and takes the tweet. Um, so <laughs> I uh, got a little caught in the weeds here with this, like, actually setting state, which is stupid because I literally do this all day, every day. I just <laughs> <laughs> kind of correct under pressure. Life coding. Life coding. <laughs> and I, made a really I don't know issue what you're too. talking about. My, well, my issue was that I was like, well, why is it saying state's not available? It's because I had function response instead of the fat arrow. So, so tell us about the fat arrow. For anyone who's not familiar with it, what does the fat arrow provide here in terms of the context of this and everything? What, what is it doing that gives you the ability to do this the way you want? It lets you access this dot state, like the components, this dot state, um, instead of like this being actual like method. So the problem was it was like not knowing what the set state is if you do just like the straight up function. But if you did fat arrow, then it uses states less lexical this. Um, so yeah, that was. And then I did it again on the component amount and was like, whoa, this is so straight, not available. So yeah, coding on the internet's hard, guys. Oh, um, <laughs> so that passes this method down to the app, which then has it available as a prop. So when you click the onclick button, it calls the handle submit method, which has access to this props a tweet from the parent component and also resets the input. Um, and then the tweet list is very, very simple. I probably would have made this a functional component instead of a like extends component since we don't have it. Generally, if you have like extends components because you're doing like, you know, constructor with this dot that state is whatever. I'm also writing PSR2 right now. Um, you are. <laughs> so if you don't actually need that, then uh, you don't actually need like a lot of this extra stuff, but I just kind of had it in there. Um, so it's getting all of the tweets from this main app component, which is set on state, passes them through, and it's calling this inline render tweets method, which basically just like iterates through, and I probably would extract this into a separate component if I had more time, just so we could you know, handle more things and have it be a little cleaner, but I just didn't hear for right now. And yeah, just kind of pulls it in. Um, did the moment calendar method, so it's kind of nicely formatted. Um, Formatting, come on. Who's time <laughs> for that? Show off. Show I off. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah. Does, does the internet have any questions? Does Matt have any questions? No, I, I feel like I'm, I'm pretty I, good. So now that I can think a little bit more clearly, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, just like I said, I moved, moved that button in here into the component. So now everything is encapsulated within the compose, comp compose tweet component, which makes a lot more logical sense. So all we have here is this. The issue with it not adding was uh, another rookie mistake, which is I was not catching the event in the right spot. So I, was, I had a this on added, which is listening to the wrong event. It's not listening in the right place. So the component actually needs to listen for the event to be passed up. So, um, so was, for some reason, Google Hangouts is not showing your screen. Uh, would, oh. oh, you're back all of a sudden. Um, so okay. we, we heard what you said the whole time. Yeah. Your screen wasn't showing. So to, okay. show us where that um, on was that was in the wrong spot before. Yeah, so what I had here is I had a, I had a listener here, this dot on that was listening for added. Mm -hmm. 
And I thought the error was that uh, it wasn't getting pushed on correctly to this type tweets, but it wasn't actually even hearing added because this is in the wrong place. Right. It needs to be up here in the component uh, using this at added. And at added, added is that is v dash on colon added, v dash right? on right exactly yeah. that's just so the same. In, as the this. interesting thing is that I, when I built out my kind of dummy version of it, I built it out like you did it right there with the v dash mm -hmm. on, and I, I was just going to ask you afterwards and say, oh, that's a, that's a new way to bind that listener that I didn't know about. But uh, no, that's instead a, that's I could have should. That's just... a derpy way to bind that listener. <laughs> cool. All right. So anything else uh, either of you want to say or anybody else want to say before the judging commenceth? Uh. Nope. No. 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 <laughs> Skewer right. away. Me. Judge me, Matt. <laughs> Fantastic work. All right. So let's first, uh, remember I said there's three criteria that we're going to use to judge these things, right? So the first criteria we're going to use um, is how many of the things you get done. The second criteria we're going to use is um, uh, the elegance of your code. And the third criteria you're going to use is the number of votes, right? So let's first take a look at the list of things that you're supposed to have done and see how many you got done. So. Give it an endpoint with two, or API with two endpoints. Build a Twitter app that does the following. Present a list of all the tweets in one box, ordered by date, time descending. Everybody got it. Compose tweet button. Everybody got it. Show a modal or separate window or separate panel that shows a compose tweet window. Uh, we're, you know, we're right at the edge of that, but okay, you know, we kind of got it. Okay. Show a text box for writing a tweet. It's, uh, no, got it's it. a separate box. <laughs> separate box. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, okay. Doesn't it? <laughs> It's close enough. Oh, I know, I know. Below, it's, 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 you know, it's there, it's there, it's, it's good. Um, below it, show a blue tweet button with a character counter to the left of it that starts at 140. Everyone got it. As the user types, update the character counter with every keystroke. If the user types more than 140 characters, oh. counter must go in the negative. We're good. The character count goes below zero, disable and gray at the tweet button. It's good. Uh, upon successful tweet creation, add the tweet to the internal data store, so it's added to the tweet list and posted to the API. So everyone handled it a little tiny bit differently. Um, the, the interesting question I have there, and this is just a, a preference thing, is do we do that by uh, taking the return that comes back from the API, which is the tweet, right. or do you use the tweet that was actually sent up? So what I did with, with mine was I used my internal tweet data. Uh, what mm. Keith did um, was he he got the response. I think the response is better because at that point you have access to the you have the ID so that you can well, get deletes and all that kind of stuff. You also have the create and the updated updates. So we kind of well here's the thing in in uh, in view the second is generally the better choice because we need that ID. Remember we're using right. that as a key. Mm -hmm. So it, there's often some wacky situations, particularly when you're using a central data store and you don't want to do that, where you've got to make up your own IDs for okay. uh, for things that you're adding to a list. And That's good. so. Well, I, the other the other reason I, the other reason I do that is because I'm assuming that there's there's going to be some sort of data that some some, some sort of additional data that might be coming back or reformatted yeah. data. Or well, like and there's there's two reasons why additional reasons in addition to what you said that you need it you need if you're going to delete the, the tweet you need the ID. Um, I need the ID. Yeah. Um, but also the if you if you guys had gotten to the the base sixty four encoded images you had an image URL coming right. back that you right. couldn't have made up yourself it would have been generated. So that was the right way. I didn't do it. You did it the right way, but it does introduce some complexity to have to do it that way. Um, so you, uh, the, the, the core, the MVP, everybody did. Baseline, done. And we're actually going to go to the votes next, and then I'll talk about it all again. So let's take a look at the I, I Now, to be fair, I squeezed a little bit of time out, but I'm not going to charge the client for that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, bonuses, nobody did any bonuses, right? Oh, I was just about to, but... Uh -huh. Yeah, right. I, I was going to hit the red, but no, I didn't hit that. <laughs> All right, so let's look at uh, battle.titan.co, see what we got there for the votes. We have 35 votes for Team React and 117 votes for Team View. So Team View definitely won on the vote side. Not that big of a surprise. All right, people, that is that is lame. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's this, this is rigged. Not that big Come of a surprise. Come at me, View fanboys. Given the fact that it's, you know, it's the view, view is well beloved within the Laravel community, but hopefully we can be a part of bringing about uh, the love for Team React as well. Okay. Here's what I want to do. <laughs> If I if I may, here's what I want to do though, because I the 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 genesis of this idea was to take two identical specs and build identical apps, mm -hmm. so that we can compare the two frameworks. And I don't, I mean, obviously there are other variables in a in a live challenge like this that yep. that uh, I don't think in in my case I was a decent representative of you. So I would like to build this out, to continue building this out the way that I would expect to do. I it think that'd be very cool. Were I not, were I not addled and then. And then, to be honest, the reason I wanted to do this was actually to look at Sam's code because I don't know React. I've worked in it. I've worked on other people's code in React, but I don't know how to code React. And I know that there are certain circumstances where React is a better choice than Vue, and I want to know where those circumstances are. So I figure by having two identical components where we can look side by side at how they each treat the same mm -hmm. task, uh, I, I, I think of that as a good 
way of learning the other framework that I don't know. So, and I, so I, I'm going to do that. I love the idea. That there's definitely a difference between how are they idiomatically and with lots of foresight built in, what does it look like to live code for the first time ever with all sorts of technical complexities and <laughs> Google Hangouts and Twitch and your brain not working because there's so many things going on. So those are two different challenges. I love the idea, the challenge of just, my willet. just allowing them to, <laughs> to, to, us to see what they look like next to each other to continue um, after this. So we'll definitely keep working on that. And for those who have asked, um, this video is going to go up on YouTube. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of editing just to get some of the, the blah off the beginning, um, but uh, we'll handle that. Um, and then also we'll put the code, probably the code after they get it to the point that they're comfortable with showing as representative of the, um, the framework, we'll put the code online under the Titan code space and we'll tweet that all out as well. Okay, any other statements before we get to the judging? All right, let me speak the truth. All right, what's going on here? So, so here's the pros and cons I'm going to say of each of these and, and uh, what I need to say right now, um, I need to say that I've worked in both of these frameworks enough to say that um, I love them both. Uh, I was originally a Vue fanboy, got some experience with React, and uh, originally said, oh my gosh, this is so complicated and this is so complex. But uh, I started seeing the, a lot of value there, and, and I still see a lot of value in each, and I love that we use both in Titan. Um, so this is not a, a statement that one is, or the other is better, but you know, we gotta have a winner, right? It's like all those uh, reality TV shows. Oh, you're both so great, but I gotta choose a winner. That's where we are. So here's, here's the, the elements that I saw and what was finally delivered. Um, and also a little bit of the process. Um, with um, React, one really thing that, good thing that had going for it was a lot of the stuff that mm -hmm. um, it, the idiomatic kind of view expression would be a computed property or a method, something like that. With React, JSX just makes it so simple to do inline JavaScript expressions that a lot of things were really, really fast that might take a couple minutes and a little bit of thinking in view. So for example, you know, change the color of the thing or the, you know, the, ac the action of thing. Um, based on some other property. And you can do it in line in view, but it feels off of the view way of thinking, and it's perfectly normal and actually even more exposed as JavaScript under the JXX way, way of thinking. So there's some ways where that really exposes some features and some functionality and some ways of thinking that, that allow us to move, move quicker and be more expressive at times. Um, one of the values that view brings is um, that everything tends to be a little bit simpler. There's a few less lines of code. Um, you only need to build up to the level of complexity that you need without having to bring her into the, some of the complexities. And one of the ways that you notice is that was the fact that we were started talking about immutability helpers, um, or even the fact that it's you know mildly difficult to just bring in a list of things at the beginning of the thing. You know, so there's some things that are just like, well, shouldn't that be baseline? Shouldn't that be easy? That in Reactor uh, can seem to be a little bit more complicated at times. Um, Obviously, the, a lot of the constraints of what happened today had nothing to do with the frameworks, had to do with the fact that when, when this is this level of pressure, your just brain has trouble turning on. But I think that looking at the, both those experiences and the final code base, I do have to say that based on this particular challenge, and again, I would say that in a different code base, uh, maybe one that's more complex or something like that, this would come out a little different, but in, in a challenge this simple, um, the elegance, the simplicity, and the ease of stepping to the code base not having written it originally, um, the, the, the far more elegant and the far more simple solution, not because of any program's ability, but because of the nature of the framework, the winner has to be Vue.js. So that was, that's it. That was, a, that was a serious hedge, by the way. <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of hedge all over the place. So love React, love Vue, fantastic work on both, on both sides. And, and having had experience with both, I can say that a lot of the ways that React really shines is when you get into the greater levels of complexity, and then it kind of like plateaus in complexity. But I do think at the entry level complexity, the simpler stuff like this, um, Vue is as complex as you need it to be. And there's a little bit of like a baseline of complexity that React has that I think that we saw here. And just kind of reading through that code base afterwards, I went, you know, it's kind of hard to follow the nesting and the passing and stuff like that. What I'm interested in seeing is, um, after we do a thorough refactoring and everything like that, you know, how does that change? But, but right now, in this moment, combination of all those three factors, Team View are the winners. So congratulations, uh, View fan, Fanboy Central. Congratulations, Keith. Great work, <laughs> Keith and Samantha. Uh, way to go, everybody. Good stuff. So this has uh, been Dev Battle 1 from Titan. This will not be the last one we do. Uh, keep tuned. Follow us on Twitter at Titan Co. Um, of course, follow uh, Keith at Keith Damiani and uh, Samantha at Samantha Geitz. And um, I hope those are the right Twitter names for them. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, and we'll put these all online and tweet them out a little bit later. So have a great night, everybody.